Firebrand, we have visitors. Invited or trespassing? The latter, but we like them, so don't kill them. No promises. Wait, them? How many are there? Okay, how did you get in here? Uh, through the front door. It's not a bank. Also, I'm military too. I'm allowed to walk in. Okay, that makes sense, but what about that? I'm camouflage colored. But we're in a desert. You think that matter? Royal guards, remember? I don't know what I expected. Well, I get it. Hey, where'd Solar go? Hey, hey, I dare you to put the Sriracha under your eyelids. Do it, do it, do hey, it. Hey, don't screw with my guards. Aw, oh, come on. This has to be catharsis by proxy. They've been standing here for six hours. Something's got to keep them occupied or one of them is going to stab the other. You know how it is. A board guard, guard is, is a, a dangerous, dangerous guard. guard. Fine, just, just do whatever you want. A collab? What? No, not like a- You said do what we want. We do the collab, or do you want your guards to be... Bored. Once upon a Zeppelin! So, so this, this so uh, Oh wait, who gets to say the thing? Uh She gets a letter from her parents because they want a cruise there. Oh, thank goodness. I thought I had too many deep fried gems. Spike is a true red-blooded questrian. We deep fry everything. It's true. You can fry anything. <laughs> you ever tried fried ice cream? It's the best. I wish I had time to go with them, but there's just too many princess duties I have to take care of. Like, what? Marketing. You need a vacation. I can keep track of the friendship log, boost community morale, and answer fan mail for a few days. Fan mail? I'm pretty sure you weren't well liked if fame and misfortune is anything to go by. That episode ruins everything. What the heck is the friendship log for? Submissions of friendship disputes or research or something? I'm assuming it's a log used to beat unruly friends into submission. Either way, this will probably be the only time we hear about it. Another for the garbage bin, I see. We really should recycle those. Ha, <laughs> no. Oh, gee. I am really looking forward to a relaxing vacation. No, you're not. Liar! 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 Yeah, it seems they changed the voices for Nightlight and Twilight Velvet. Instead of Andrew Francis and Tara Strong, it's now Charles Dimmer and Patricia Drake. It probably got awkward having Tara talking to herself at family get-togethers. She already does that enough with her other characters. Or because they didn't want the kids to have the same voices as the parents because... Implications. Oh, I can't wait to get on this Zeppelin and fly like a Pegasus! Really? I remember you getting airsick on Admiral Fairweather's wild ride at Pony Island. Of course there's an MLP Coney Island, and of course it's named that. Waiting for Satan to take it over, though. Air sickness. I, I don't think I can let that one slide. Air sickness. Um, people do that. Airlines still provide barf bags for a reason. Oh, really? When was the last time you saw somebody throw up on a plane? You haven't been on a plane with Thespio, have you? I exactly. Wait, wait, what? Huh? Besides, doesn't that mean wagon sickness is a thing, too? I hope you ponies feel welcome to board, because you are! <laughs> Please tell me this is happening. Please tell me this isn't happening. There are two kinds of people. Well, that was an assertive welcome. It's happening! No! Two kinds. Wait, you don't know where this prize came from? When some pony offers you a free vacation, you just sign the paperwork and don't ask questions! <laughs> you just know that she sold her soul to iTunes. What's a soul? Eh, I get a free cruise, so sign me up, Mr. Stoffelis. Well, I did categorize the ship's activities and make a schedule organized by each of our interests. Oh, I just love how the numbers and letters are organized in their little boxes. It's so satisfying. Oh, the OCD is genetic. Hmm, this barrel jumping at Niagara Falls sounds interesting. Oh, so she's an adrenaline junkie. Hey guys, I think I found MLP's original MILF. And no, Cadence doesn't count. She's not the original. Adrenaline. 
Hey Celestia, I got something you might want to try, but it doesn't look like Shining has the stomach to reenact Titanic. I'm afraid Flurry may be airsick. Since I know that isn't a problem for you, would you mind taking her blow? <laughs> Best waifu, hands down. Was Cadence given character? Holy crap, finally! Look, I don't want to hate Cadence. I want to like her and Shining and Flurry, but the show frequently expects us to like them just because they exist. Show us more personality of the Candy Princess, please. But it appears that they're getting some unwanted attention. Really? You think that somebody who frequently signs fan mail, a famous author of a controversial book, or two members of freaking royalty wouldn't be surprised at the attention? We are now high enough to see all of Camelot, even the royal tree where Princess Twilight and her brother Shining Armor were born. Ooh! <laughs> oh, let's get down for that. <laughs> um, you guys know that's not where we were born. It's where you were conceived. What? But I thought everything in Twiberry was true. Does the internet only tell lies? Only when it's the good news. On our route north, we will pass the spires of the Crystal Empire. Wait a minute. They just hopped from Cloudsdale to Canterlot to the Crystal Empire in 30 seconds. Help! My map is broken. Is the Rainbow Factory next to Canterlot or above the Crystal Empire? I demand that these reality warping shenanigans be explained. Where Princess Cadence rescued her alicorn baby Spike from a monster made of fire. Well, I mean, he is a baby dragon after all. So is he just ad-libbing these? Cause they're kind of better than reality actually. But Twilight decides to talk to the announcer who is none other than Iron Will. The assertiveness seminar market dried up. So Iron Will started a new career, organizing themed vacation packages. Good theme, bad business practices. Say what you will about him, guy knows how to draw a crowd. Say what you Iron Will about. You know what, fair. But yeah, it turns out Iron Will bamboozled the Sparkle family and his guests of honor for a cruise. Iron Will outlined all the details of the cruise in the prize acceptance and consent form that you signed. Not sure that contract is legally binding. Twilight and Cadence are adults. How do their parents, or worse yet, in-laws, sign them up for something like that? Equestrian law is weird. Looks like someone was doing their princess duties of marketing. But if Twilight Sparkle and her family don't want it, Iron Will can cancel the cruise and break the hearts of every princess adoring pony on board. I'm not saying you got no choice, but you got no choice. I am henceforth coining the phrase masculine guilt tripping. Then Twilight offers herself up as tribute so her family can have a vacation. Princess Twilight has a deal. And like that, the whole thing is legal. We even got witnesses. All together now, legally binding. He's also crushing her hook. Keep in mind that Twilight was thrown through a mountain. Granted, she was souped up on alicorn juice, but still. Oh, side note, we watched this on Netflix and all of Iron Will's dialogue is in caps lock. Just perfect. Turns out Twilight was the grand prize in a raffle and she gets to spend the day with that awkward, excitable fan who paid $10,000 on a BrodyCon ticket. Wait, is this an allegory for cons? Yeah, you can tell that this is another episode taking a shot at some of the negative facets of the fandom. While Fame and Misfortune did it, I'll be charitable and say ungracefully, this one seems to be a bit more fair. Because, yeah, I've been to a lot of cons. We've all gotten starstruck like that around the MLP staff. Heck, people get starstruck when they come up to me. Several have even cried, and I don't say that to shame or make fun of any of you. I'm just pointing out the reality that meeting someone well-known, especially if you look up to them, is a very emotional experience. Many times the stars don't know how to act and the fans really don't want to screw up meeting their idols. It's awkward energy all around if you're not used to it. Agreed. I've actually been followed around by a couple of excited fans sometimes. And as exciting as it is to meet someone who likes what I do, I've had to tell them to have fun without me. Sometimes you just need space. Then we get to bingo. Give that cage a whirl. Dad, what did you say? <laughs> he said to uh, give it a, a whirl. <laughs> uh, are we family yet? 
Twilight is my favorite time of day. <laughs> it's also your name. <laughs> Just that damn school. Can I have a lock of your hair so that I can sniff it every night? <laughs> what? Too far? I could shoot you and feel no remorse. Are you sure you're not airsick, big brother? No way! How could I be airsick? I'm in the water, so it totally cancels out. <laughs> huh. Let me make sure I'm understanding this right. One plus one is zero. Huh, you learn something new every day. Okay, yeah, this is really funny, but... Mm, okay, I'll just say it. Shining is kind of pathetic. Welcome to the present. Glad you caught up. Yes, we like that Shining Armor is actually getting development since season five. The goofy moments such as the geekiness and the freaking out over fatherhood are fine. But this, it feels like overkill. Is the only way the show can think to develop Shining is by making him look pathetic? Like, like the show is over, and many of us are still wondering how he actually became Captain of the Guard. It's hard to respect or follow a guy who's this... weak. Maybe he's strong on the ground. Yes, as exemplified by all those times he defeated one, two, three, four, zero! Zero bad guys! In fact, aside from his debut, he's lost every single fight he's been a part of. He only defeated Chrysalis with Cadence's help, which is another superpower that never comes up again. His only marginal success was tossing Cadence, and the finish are better at that. No, really, look it up. Competitive wife carrying. He should have stayed in Takoro where he's useful. Huh, now that I think about it, that kind of explains the water weakness. How can I be airsick? I'm in the water, so it totally cancels out. I will pay money to see this boy step into a gator. Huh? It's a marine thing. Imagine a sardine can on wheels with pogo sticks for suspension, all while breathing in exhaust fumes in a greenhouse. Isn't that dangerous? Yeah, trust me. If you're lucky, the fumes will knock you out and you'll wake up in a pile of someone else's vomit by the time the trip ends. And you signed up for this. Two words. Free dental. dental. That was just the first heat of ten. Oh my god, you could grind meat on this. Ah! I've heard of soda ten packs, but you can have one of those on your chest? This is one of the reasons why I really enjoy Iron Will. His over-the-top masculinity in ham. Isn't it more like beef? Or turkey! Well, I mean, you were talking about me. Twilight, are you sure you don't mind doing all of these princess activities? What is going on? Suddenly, Cadence is getting good development and Shining is regressing. Are we in Wonderland? Ah, I knew it. She's a changeling, but instead of feeding on love, she feeds on character development. Well, with Shining, must have been a small meal because this is pretty much all we get for the rest of the show. I'm moving along to Barrel Right? Guess someone's a fan of The Hobbit. Oh, why did that last question have to be a two-parter? I just hope I have time for one barrel ride with Mom. Question, how are these barrels safe? And secondly, why would anyone do it? Why does anyone do anything? Sheer, unadulterated boredom. I worry for you deeply. I just don't want you to forget. It's your vacation too. Boy, ain't that reality the older you get. Even when you're on vacation or even visiting people, that doesn't mean you can just skimp out on work that needs to be done. I know that sounds kind of dumb, especially for my younger viewers, but trust me, it'll make sense eventually. And unfortunately, Twilight misses the Northern Stars with her family. You know, you'd figure at least one of her family members would let Twilight know that she was missing the literal only reason she agreed to put up with all this publicity. I miss them. I miss the Northern Stars. <laughs> you were right, Twilight. They were breathtaking. I take it back. She's heartless and any development gain means nothing. How can you walk up to someone in literal tears and talk about the very thing they said to your face? It'll all be worth it to see this and spend time with you. I think the real antagonists of this episode are Twilight's family members. You know who isn't happy? Me! <laughs> Sorry, but maybe that wouldn't have happened if you weren't practically standing on my tail. Not even my real family stands so close. Ugh. Huh, you can hear it. I'm aware that she's clearly very upset, but I envy the catharsis she gained from yelling. 
Yeah, what Twilight does here is shocking, but at the same time, you understand where she's coming from, especially if you're a community guest at a con. Wanna hang out with your online friends that you rarely get to see? Sucks for you! Sit in the vendor hall and sell your livelihood so you can eat. You wanna go to your friend's panel and support them? Well, it turns out that other thing you wanted to do is scheduled at the same time, too. You're on a panel? Well, you forgot to eat earlier, so suffer with an empty tummy and like it. And if you're a guest of honor, <laughs> it's cranked up to 11. That said, we don't want to justify her behavior. Speak for yourself. I think she's justified. Whatever. Twilight's still wrong for doing what she did, and I'm not just talking about unapologetically hurting someone. We need to be careful about the all I want mindset, as it's technically a mindset of entitlement. It doesn't really matter how much you've sacrificed for others. People are not obligated to give you anything, even if they sympathize with you on some level. You might not mean it this way, but all I want can be an insidious form of guilt tripping. Well, sometimes ponies want more from a princess than you can give, and it can be hard to know where to draw the line. You seem to know pretty well. Once I had Flurry Heart, the line was easier for me to see. Turn away for this one. Eat my f cadence. What the f do you know about drawing a line when you were literally just rubbing the fact that your sister-in-law missed the one thing she showed up for and has been bending over backwards to see? Oh, and don't think you can lecture Twilight about drawing lines, little miss. I brainwash ponies into loving each other over hoofakir spat. You're the f***ing Olympic champion of crossing f***ing lines. Um, sorry. Your sensor's gonna be working overtime on that one, buddy. Which is annoying, because this is a good message. A rather specific message, but still a good one. Conventions and meetups are put together to give everyone an experience, a chance to get autographs, or just to talk to a featured guest. But in sculpting that experience, the organizers aren't the featured guests. They don't know what someone can handle or what they're doing to take care of themselves, so it's up to the guests to speak up and say when enough is enough. Eric's the type of person who will go to a convention and host singing circles for hours on end if there's people singing along, but not everyone has the endurance for that. And the same goes for autographs, panels, and meetups. Everyone has their limit. If Cadence didn't rub it in the way she did, this message might have come across better overall. And unfortunately, sometimes it's hard for the guests to prioritize themselves over their friends and fans. Let's face it, nobody wants to let people down, especially if those people are those that look up to you or close friends. And yeah, sometimes that mentality leads to a meltdown, because bottling up all that stress usually never ends well. Some folks just can't handle the pressure like others, but that's why it's important to be mindful. Just because you're wanted doesn't necessarily mean that you're needed. I'm certain your fans would take solace in the fact that you're happy and healthy, rather than pushing yourself to the breaking point. What? Just because I have anger issues doesn't mean I can't be insightful. You will always have obligations as a princess, but you also have an obligation to yourself. Not. Saying. A word. But Twilight goes back and apologizes for her behavior. What do you say we do something off the schedule? <gasps> <gasps> Who are you? I take it back, she's the changeling! Come on, guys, not every instance of character growth needs to be met with accusations of imposterism. It does when the character in question has crippling OCD. I think it's funny that even Star Chaser knows about Twilight's OCD tendencies. I mean, he did pay up the wazoo for that ticket, so he's likely a huge fan. And also, his name is Star Chaser, so... <sighs> you know, I, I didn't put that together until just now, and honestly, I, I think that makes it worse. Twilight then announces to the whole crew that she wants to take time to herself. The response? Heartwarmingly understanding. Of course, Princess Twilight. This is actually a realistic reaction. See, a while back, Nintendo announced that they were scrapping the work they've done for Metroid Prime 4, stating that they didn't think the game would have been good if they continued and are starting over from scratch, as well as apologizing for making fans wait longer. Because they were so honest and upfront with their fans, the response to that was overwhelming understanding and encouragement. 
Sure, most of us were bummed that we weren't getting another Metroid game, but we appreciated being let in on the loop. If you remind the people you're talking to that you're human, they tend to treat you with humanity. But it turns out that the guests aren't happy about being bamboozled. Ooh, and a swift jab at hiding behind fine print to boot. But I will learn his lesson before. Satisfaction not guaranteed. Go Reva! I didn't learn anything. <laughs> I was right all along. Why even live if you'll never be that cool? That parachute is a giant middle finger. Screw you. I got your money. Wait, who's flying the Zeppelin back to Canchalot? Him and the goats are the only staff on the ship. He may be pushy and manipulative, but no pony can say that Minotaur isn't prepared. Don't you have a puddle to drown in? Shining. Darling. Shut up. So we get some lovey-dovey family moments, which causes Twilight to miss the Northern Star again, and that was Once Upon a Zeppelin. Someone at DHX is venting, and... I can't say that I hate it. There's a lot of realism showcased in this episode. I've been in everyone's position here, Star Chaser, Twilight, and Twilight's family, and seeing it all showcased here is rather cathartic. Iron Will is tons of fun as always, and it's always interesting to see how far he can push being an antagonist without actually doing anything illegal or evil. He's chaotic neutral. Aside from little nitpicks like some of Cadence and especially Shining's characterization, this was a solid episode. I especially liked how this episode can resonate with all three of these groups while also showcasing some of the problems that may arise at a convention or meet and greet setting. It's important for guests to take care of themselves, but it's also important for the cloud chasers of the worlds to give the guests some space, and even moreover, that family can sometimes stand up for their loved ones. Except when they screw you over. Like Twilight's. Alright, we're done. Now go home. I'm in hell. Actually, you're in my front yard. Get off my lawn. Wait, you ever fire any live ammunition out of that party howitzer? N no Would you like to? Emphasis on live? We've been overusing the word cathartic today, but there's really no better word for it right now. So, uh, where do the people you fire out usually land? I don't know. I think I understand why Twilight's mom likes this. I'm gonna put all you pansies to shame! What is he? Oh no. You all better not take his dare too seriously, I swear to- 